Word for word, please repeat. Uh, Janma, birth. Karma, work. Cha, also. Me, of mine. Divyam, transcendental. Evam, like this. Yaha, anyone who. Veti knows Tattvataha in reality Tyaktva leaving aside Deham this body Punaha again Janma birth Na never Eti does attain mom unto me eighty does attain saha he arjuna o arjuna what the translation purport by his divine grace ac bhaktivedanta swami shila prabhupada shila prabhupada ki jai one who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities does not, upon leaving the body, take his birth again in this material world, but attains my eternal abode, O Arjuna. So please repeat. One who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities does not Upon leaving the body, take his birth again in this material world, but attains my eternal abode, O Arjuna. Purport. The Lord's descent from his transcendental abode is already explained in the verse 6. In the sixth verse, one who can understand the truth of the appearance of the personality of Godhead is already liberated from material bondage. And therefore, he returns to kingdom of God immediately after quitting this present material body. Such liberation of the living entity from material bondage is not at all easy. The impersonalists and the yogis attain liberation only after much trouble and many, many births. Even then, the liberation they achieve, merging in the impersonal Brahma Jyoti of the Lord, is only partial. And there is a risk of returning to this material world. But the devotee, simply by understanding the transcendental nature of the body and activities of the Lord, attains the abode of the Lord after ending this body and, not, and does not run the risk of returning to this material world. In the Brahma Samhita 533, it is stated that the Lord has many, many forms and incarnations. Advaita Machyuttamanadhyananta Rupam Although there are many transcendental forms of the Lord, they are still one and the same Supreme Personality of Godhead. One has to understand this fact with conviction, although it is incom incomprehensible to mundane scholars and empiric philosophers. As stated in the Vedas, Purusha Bhodini Upanishad, Eko Devo Nitya Lila Anurakto Bhaktavyapi Hridayantaratma the one Supreme Personality of Godhead 
is eternally engaged in many, many transcendental forms in relationships with his unalloyed devotees. This Vedic version is confirmed in this verse of the Gita personally by the Lord. He who accepts his tru this truth on the strength of the authority of the Vedas and of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and who does not waste time in specul sp philosophical speculations, attains the highest perfectional stage of liberation. Simply by accepting this truth on faith, one can, without a doubt, attain liberation. The Vedic version, Tattvam Asi, is actually applied in this case. Anyone who understands Lord Krishna to be the Supreme, or who says unto the Lord, You are the same Supreme Brahman, the Personality of Godhead, is certainly liberated instantly, and consequently his entrance into the transcendental association of the Lord, of the Lord is guaranteed. In other words, such a faithful devotee of the Lord attains perfection, and this is confirmed by the following Vedic assertion. Tam eva viditvati mrityumeti nanyat pantha vidyate yanaya. One can attain the perfect stage of liberation from birth and death simply by knowing the Lord, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And there is no other way to achieve this perfection. Svetashvatara Upanishad 3.8 that there is no alternative means that anyone who does not understand Lord Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead is surely in the mode of ignorance and consequently he will not attain salvation simply so to speak by licking the outer surface of the bottle of honey or by interpreting the Bhagavad Gita according to mundane scholarship. Such empiric philosophers may assume very important roles in the material world, but they are not necessarily eligible for liberation. Such puffed up mundane scholars have to wait for the causeless mercy of the devotee of the Lord. One should therefore cultivate Krishna consciousness with faith and knowledge, and in this way attain perfection. Om Agyana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Jakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobishtam Staptitam Yena Bhutale Svayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Svapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yutapada Kamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Scha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Ragunatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitam Scha E Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kaupat Rubyascha Kripa Sindhubya Evacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So I'll read the verse again. One who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities does not, upon leaving the body, take his birth again in this material world, but attains my eternal abode, O Arjuna. 
Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pštaya Butile, Šrimati Bhakti Vedanta Svami Niti Namine, Namaste Sarasvati Deve Gauravani Pritčarine, Nirvišeša Šunjevadi Paščatya Dešitarine. Hare Krishna. So today we are going again through the same verses yesterday. To, because it's a big verse. That's why we're taking it two days. So, this verse says, One who knows my transcendental nature of my transcendental appearance and activities. So sometimes there is discussion comes. What does it mean to know? Is it only just to know because we read it and we know? We, we know. Or it is something more than just a fact or something what we heard? Does it mean to experience? Does it mean to realize? So here, the ver word which is translated knows is veti. So in the Sanskrit dictionary veti, there are several meanings of veti, which are all more, more or less the same, but it, it gathers together different aspects. For example, veti means to remember. Then veti means to experience. Veti means to be acquainted with, to feel, to observe, to inquire about, to notice, to understand, to be conscious of. So all these words are not just words which, which describe that we have an information or that we just know. These all words indicate of some kind of experience that we have like to remember, to feel, to be conscious of. So this is just something more that we read and we know. So somebody who experiences, notices, understands, are conscious of, or remembers the transcendental appearance and activities of the Lord. This is what it's meant here by Veti. So I looked more there are actually, in other languages, words that originate from this veti. For example, in Slavic language, ancient Slavic language, but in Orthodox churches, people used to use, it is vedeti, which is, which is uh, in those languages, means something to do with seeing, to see. Even in Latin, there is a word which originates from Veti, and believe it or not, that word is video. So video is something to do with seeing. So that also involves experience. So basically one who videos the Krishna's activities. So there are also statements where Srila Prabhupada talks about watching TV in a heart. So I wanted to read you one beautiful quote about what Srila Prabhupada talks about TV in a heart. He writes, Similarly, just as you can see a television picture transmitted from thousands and thousands of miles away, you can always see Govinda in your heart if you prepare yourself properly. This is stated in Brahma Samhita. Premanjanats churita bhakti vilochanena shanta sadaiva hridayeshu vilokayanti. There is a television within your heart. It is not that you have to purchase the television set, it is there in your heart. And God is also there. You can see Him, you can hear Him, you can talk with Him provided you repair the machine. And this repairing process is Krishna consciousness. Now, to repair the television, an expert te te technician is required. Similarly, you require the help of someone expert in the science of Krishna consciousness. Then the machine in your heart will work and you will be able to see Krishna. This is the perfection of yoga. So that is Veti. That is what it means to know. So, to know Janma, to know Karma, 
to know appearance and to know activities. And both of those are divya, transcendental. So there are some aspects how to understand, how to, what, what does it mean that Krishna's birth, Krishna's appearance is divya, transcendental. It is, one of those aspects is that Krishna appears out of his free will. He is not forced by any kind of external energy or anything else to appear. Like Jiva, like myself, appeared in this birth by the laws of karma. Nobody asked whether I want to have this body or that body. It was just given. I earned it from before, so it was given. So it was by force of my fruit, of, by force of fruit of my previous activities that I appeared in this form, in this world. But for Krishna is not like that. Krishna is not forced to appear. He comes, we know already from previous verse, he comes, he says, to deliver the pious, he comes to uh, save the religion, to destroy the impious or demoniac. But as we all know, really he comes to reciprocate with his devotees. We know Prabhupada also said, he says he comes here to exhibit his pastimes, that these conditioned souls who are us here can get attracted to those pastimes and then have a desire, maybe I should fix my TV, that I can actually see them. So that is one of the aspects of Krishna's appearance. Free will, free will, nothing is, there is no any kind of law or any kind of force what makes Krishna appear. Another aspect of Krishna's transcendental appearance is um, that even he so-called appears and disappears, it doesn't mean that his, ex his existence has finished. Like sun sets in the evening and rises in the morning. So during night we don't see the sun. But it does not mean that sun stop being, that sun is, does, not, does not exist. So Krishna is like that as well. He appears in this universe, then he apparently disappears. Then he appears in another universe and apparently disappears. But actually he is not appearing or disappearing. He always exists. So that's, that's another aspect of Krishna's transcendental appearance. And then there is one more. He, he is like an actor who changes his costumes. Like when he appears as Varahadev or Kurma, when he appears as Matsya. It's not that he is changing bodies like that. Like maybe next lifetime I will appear like a hog. So this is different. This is not like when, when Krishna appeared as Varahadev that this is out of his bad karma, he appeared as a boar. Now he's paying what he has done. This appearance of, of, of different kind of, of, um, of Krishna's avatars are like changing the dress of an actor. The same transcendental nature of the Lord is there, no matter which kind of shape or form he takes. So then another point feature of Krishna's uh, transcendental appearance is that he is not actually taking up the body. Like conditioned jiva takes the body and then he acts in that field of that body and tries to lord over the material nature. But Krishna is not taking up the body. Krishna and his body is non-different, like Jiva and his body is different. We are not this body. This is what we learn from day one. You are not this body. You are not this body. But for Krishna, inside, outside, soul or body is no different. Krishna is Krishna. Like Krishna is his name. It's not, it's Krishna is the name. Krishna is his body. So that is also his transcendental appearance. And there are some more. So what about karma? What about activities? Krishna is doing so many things, unlimited, unlimited. There is no 
no way can all this be described or counted because as soon as you start, he starts new and new activities, new and new pastimes and leelas. Like even thousand-headed Lord Anandadev is describing his glories and his pastimes for thousands and thousands of years and still he cannot manage because it's unlimited. So what we can do, we can still hear, we can still meditate and we can inquire. So what is my role there? What is my service? What is my work? Prabhupada says in his lecture that in this world everybody identifies with some kind of group. Everybody identifies with some kind of party. Either it's religious, Christian, Muslim, this and that, or material, more mundane. I'm a football player, so all the football players are my men. Or I'm a cook, so all the cooks are my friends. I'm a musician, so all the, I'm only hanging out with musicians. Then someone is, I'm a supporter of such and such pol politician. I'm this, I'm that. So many groups. And actually, since childhood, everybody is encouraged to find one group like that and belong. And actually, it's nat natural craving. We want to belong to something. So everybody is in some group. And Prabhupada says, and we are in Krishna's group. We are in Krishna's party. But then, again he says, but then there is fight among each party. Our party is good, your party is not good. You are, your party are, are crazy ones, but our ones are the good ones. And Prabhupada said, it's true. People will look at devotees and will say, these are the bunch of the crazies. And we will look at them and they say, they are crazy. So everybody will say that each other's group are crazy. And that's what's going on. We may often think, oh, this materialistic person is crazy. How can he do like this? And they think, look at them, how they can do like that? So everybody thinks that everybody else's party is crazy. If on the mundane platform, on the religious platform, on a spiritual platform, everybody will think that everyone else is crazy. Someone will think my football band group is better, they are just crazy. Everybody will sing. Someone will like this musician. How can you like another musician? Look how he's singing. You are crazy. Everybody will sing. So Prabhupada is asking a question. Who is actually crazy? So then he tries to analyze. Who is actually crazy? He says, whatever, whoever you meet and you will ask, who are you? And the person will identify with that group will say, I'm a, I'm a musician. He will say, I'm a football player. Or someone will say, I'm American. I'm Indian. I'm this, I'm that. So whatever answer all around the world you will hear, it will be connected to this body. Somehow or other, on a gross or subtle level, who are you? I'm a mother. Who are you? I'm a woman. Who are you? I'm a man. Who are you? I'm a child. Who, am I, who are you? I'm a doctor. Who are you? I'm a lawyer. Everything will be connected to this body. But then Prabhupada says, but we are not this body. So if I am saying that I am something that I'm not, that I'm crazy. For example, I am, if I am coming in and I'm starting to behave like a kangaroo, I'm jumping around, putting things in my pocket, you will start thinking, maybe she's crazy. Why? Because I am not kangaroo. If kangaroo comes in and starts behave like this, we will not think that he's crazy. But if I start behave, you will think I'm crazy. Because I am behaving in a way that it's not me. So anybody who is saying, answering on a question, who am I, something connected with this body is crazy. So this is Prabhupada says, so only somebody who will say, I am spiritual soul, that person is not crazy. But then Prabhupada continues, he says, but still, 
even that in a spiritual conception still can be some crazy people find someone who will say I'm spirit soul and I will merge into big spirit into the supreme spirit he says that's also spiritual craziness like we often give example to illustrate the fact I'm not this body so this person is driving in a car and he think, identifies with the car but when he gets out of the car then we can see that the person is the one who is driving in the car is car so we so this body is a car and the soul is a driver so it's very easy to understand that we, we are not this body the body is like car so driver is not the car so that's one thing but then those who say that I'm spiritual soul and when I become liberated when I become free from this material bondage I merge that's another craziness so Prabhupada says that the person in that case we can continue analogy if if a person uh, gets out of car and he disappears he merges in the air he doesn't exist anymore that's kind of another kind of madness the person while he's sitting in a car he exists as soon as he gets out of car he doesn't exist where have we ever seen such an example so Prabhupada said that is another type of craziness so only those who are not crazy we can consider only the, who are we, we can consider who are not crazy are persons who are saying I'm spirit, spiritual soul and what is my spiritual work I know what is in my, my material, material work I may be husband I may be mother I may be student I may be football player I may be this or maybe that this is my material work but once I am uh, 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 understood this fact that I am not this body then I have to inquire so what is my spiritual work what is my spiritual duty so that person Prabhupada says is not crazy so he says that's why we are we have we have made this international society for Krishna consciousness that everybody can be engaged fully in Krishna's service and find what is my spiritual work what is my spiritual duty and it's not just just because we are with this body doing some kind of activity that that's already our spiritual identity achieved still we are working with this body which will perish and then what that's why Prabhupada says that this service which we are doing now it's like practice we are practicing and real service starts when we once we attain spiritual body our real real form so, but we have to inquire so what is it what is that form what is my service to Krishna what is my role in Krishna's group in Krishna's party so that's why Prabhupada says it on the verse manmana bhava mad bhakto so he says manmana bhava so always think of Krishna so that is Krishna consciousness so and what does it mean to always think of Krishna mad bhakto he says bhakti means devotional service so you always serve if somebody somebody who is 24 hours engaged in a service of Krishna naturally will think of Krishna so he says that's why we are having so many different activities that we can be always engaged and always serve and always think of Krishna because our really only duty is to serve is to think of Krishna to be, that means be Krishna conscious that means Veti that means to notice that means to remember that means to experience to feel to inquire to understand to be conscious of that's why it is international society for Krishna consciousness that we are conscious of Krishna so 24 hours service 24 7 service 
So with such intensity, somebody who is engaged like that, 24 hours sir, thinking of Krishna, with such intensity, one brings Krishna in front of him. But that is not a, not a cheap thing. That has to be practiced. That has to be practiced. Somebody who has so many anarthas and identification with this material body, who has no very slight, I cannot say no, but very slight attraction, little attraction to Krishna. How can someone like that say, I'm engaged in 24, uh, 24 7 in Krishna's service? And if we are not, then we have to think, we have to regret. And some lamentation should be there. So this, this regret and lamentation does not mean that we beat ourselves up and, or we are getting into depression. That lamentation me means that we are trying to improve. We are trying to improve. So actually, the easiest way how to test whether we have attraction or not to Krishna is how much attraction we have to his holy name. Because Krishna and the holy name is non-different. Krishna is his name. So what, okay, we, uh, we vowed that we will chant 16 rounds. Or maybe we didn't get initiated yet. Everyone is else doing 16 rounds. If I'm not doing 16 rounds, I will be like a lower, a little lower person. So let me also do 16 rounds. I will be at least equal with everybody. So, but then we finish the 16 rounds and then what we do? Do you want to chant more? So we chanted one more. Okay, I did one more. At least someone, no one can say that I'm only chanting 16. But then do what we do more. So this thinking 24-7 of Krishna means that we always want it. We always want to hear about Krishna. We always want to chant Krishna's name. There is not a time then we just put our bead bag or we hear kirtan and, or we don't want the, or we are indifferent. So if we have such an attitude, if we have it, I mean, this is not a crime. In one sense, it is crime. Every, we are all criminals in this material world. That's a fact. But what, what I would say, it is not a surprise that we may not have that strong taste and strong attraction. After so much of being stuck in this material world, it is a surprise that we have a little bit of attraction. So that attraction should be cultivated and should never, and we should never think that, okay, I'm done now. We should never think, okay, I'm satisfied with what I'm doing now. That sh if that thought appears, it is very dangerous. So we should always be or having thought in my mind, in our mind, how to perform better. So it is always better service. This is Vaisheshak Prabhu mantra. He says, all ABS, always better service. So that should be our meditation. And then naturally, naturally things will come. So it is said that one, somebody who has so much intense devotional attitude, so much love, intense, so saturated, that Krishna is brought as if by force in front of that person. And then we can see Krishna face to face. That's how Prabhupada says, and we can see him. <coughs> we can talk to him. And Prabhupada even said, and Krishna will also kiss you. So things like that is not something mysterious. Things like that is not something which will, it's for others. But we have to intensify our devotional service. So then Krishna is attracted. Actually, it is described by Bhaktivinoda Thakur that in those intense, saturated states of consciousness, bhava and prema, which is our goal, it is not just something to talk about. It's not just something to think it's so high that maybe not even to talk about. 
but it is something that is our goal. That's what we are think. Whatever we are doing here in this Krishna consciousness is to attain that. We should never forget for a moment in our consciousness that the, our only goal in our, in our lives is to attain love of God, which is prema. So it is described by Bhaktivinoda Thakur that the state of prema, the love of God is so saturated in one's consciousness is so full, so saturated with this love of God that anything material, any th material thoughts cannot penetrate. Like they as if bounce back. They cannot penetrate. In any other below state, some gap they can find. When we, when we are in very lower kind of stages, we could say where so much material attraction is there, so many anarthas are there, so very easily that material energy takes us over. Very easily. But then we may attain nishta, the steady stage, we could say, the state of steadiness. That we, we are not so much carried over or taken over by the modes of nature. Then it applies like, we say we are still in a boat, we feel the waves, we are rocking in the waves, but we are not in the water. We are on a surface. So, next, from that kind of stage where we are finally on a surface, we are not drowning in the waves of material energy. In that state, we develop some taste. And then the attraction to the spiritual objects are vast. So much more attractive the difference between attraction of material and spiritual objects is so vast that it's very easy to reject that lower taste. And then little by little, on each step higher and higher, that intensity and of attraction for spiritual objects increases and increases. Still in prema, it gets so saturated that no material energy, no amount of material energy can penetrate. So that is our goal. And even in the purport of 18, which was at 56, the Manmana Bhava Madhbakto, Prabhupada says that we should not be just satisfied with seeing the surface of the ocean. We want to dive, dive deep and see the, all the aquatics that live there. So that could be, con that could be uh, compared to the spiritual world. We are not just interested to see the surface. We are not just interested to hear some theoretical thing. We actually want to know, veti. We actually want to know, we want to experience and remember. We want to feel and ob observe. That's what veti means. So it means we have to dive deeper and we have to see what kind of who lives there? What kind of people are there? And what is my work there? So these should be the thoughts of devotee. And then how to attain it. We know that here in 4.9 Krishna says, one who knows me, one, one who knows me, attains me. But then in the further verses in 18th chapter, 18.55 Krishna says, but how one knows me? By devotional service. Bhakti mama bijanati, by bhakti, by devotional service. So devotional service is one, is what reveals Krishna to us. And what devotion means? Devotion means bhakti. So that means love. So everyone is attracted by love. So Krishna is a person. He is also attracted in a similar way, in the same way. So we should not take this for granted and always remember again and again, and I'm repeating again that what is our only goal? So that is to understand this depth of that ocean and see those, uh, see those aquatics who live there. This is analogy what Prabhupada says. So just as a conclusion, I wanted to share you one, in one sense, funny thing, but it is actually very serious. Somebody sent me on WhatsApp a video. Some man, 
I don't know who is that. Maybe some famous politician or something. Because I'm not so into watching all the news, so I don't know who is who. <laughs> so somebody, um, some man from Africa, I think he's from Africa, I don't know. Uh, big man like that sitting with a tie and a suit on a, on a table and many people are the like, same way like him. So he is receiving some big post, very responsible and big post. So somebody who is giving that to him, he is actually petitioning him and asking. We heard that you actually have a loan. Would you tell us about your loan? So it was a kind of a fault. As if it seemed to me, at least by watching this video, that uh, actually in one sense I did not want to watch because I thought it's something mundane, but now I know why, that, why I had to watch that. So it seemed that it was a fault on his side, side maybe even a, such a big fault that it, he will lose that post, that he has a loan. So tell us about the loan, they are asking him. So he's saying, when I, was, uh, when I finished my L grade 11, and uh, my mother lost the job, already two years back. But at that point, she had exhausted all her savings. So all of our family, I understood the father was not there, only mother and many, many children. So at that time, we didn't have what to eat. But I was just finishing my school, and I knew I can go to university and I can study law, which means we would have a bright future. So now I had this problem. If I go to study, my family has nothing to eat. So what to do? But I was so determined to study. I did not want to give up this idea. So he said, I went into town and I approached one rich Indian merchant, one wholesaler. So he approached that man and he told his story. And he says, can you give me a loan? Because if I want to go to study, my family has nothing to eat. And if I, but if I stay back to help them, I understood he was the eldest son, then I cannot study. So we will just remain always in this situation. So he said the Indian man, he did not ask one single question. He says, I will help you. But I will not give you money. I will give you your mother a voucher every month of a certain amount of value. And she can come to my grocery shop and buy whatever she needs for that voucher. And, and then this young boy says, okay, so and when I graduate, and then I will pay back to you whatever money has accumulated. So he's, and the man that with a big suit, who is now taking that big post, he says, and that Indian man didn't take any signature from me. He didn't, uh, he was just trusting, he just took my word. So then, that's how it happened. He said, I went home. My mother could not believe that I could make such an arrangement, and it all happened in that way. So then everybody was happy. He went to study. Mother could feed their family. So after three years, when he finished his degree, you now he comes back to that Indian man. He says, so what would be arrangements? How I can pay it back to you? So the Indian man says, don't worry. Don't pay anything back to me. You just do to others what I did to you. And while saying that, the big man who is sitting in front of all these other big men bursts into tears and starts crying and wipes his, with his handkerchief his eyes. And everybody is so touched. You can see his faces. Even when I was watching, I felt so touched. And then I was thinking that for he, that Indian man gave such a gift for the whole life. And it's touching that man's heart, who is so strong to gain some big, big positions in the society. How touching is such a gift? But all this story, what I just told you, it is just 100% mundane. 
mother is poor, children are starving. It's very nice to give such a gift from that Indian man. But so mundane, fully nothing spiritual. This Indian man did not give him any guidance in the spiritual life, nothing. He actually gave him facility to enjoy this material world and drag him down to sense gratification. So, but still, because of this act of, of, of affection, probably this Indian man saw that uh, young man as his son, so he wanted to help him. Just that act of affection touched his heart, that in front of all these big, big, whatever they were, men, he starts crying in front of camera and he starts crying. So then I was thinking, how often we cry while thinking what kind of gift Srila Prabhupada has given to us. And this is nowhere near to be mundane. It's nowhere near even to being something spiritual. It is the highest, it is a matchless. I'm saying this, but I'm wondering if I myself have, have this veti, have uh, realized what Srila Prabhupada has given. So in my humble state, I can only take Srila Prabhupada's instructions and follow those instructions with full conviction that that will give me mercy of Srila Prabhupada, will give me mercy of, my, of all our acharyas and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And then one day I will be able to dive deep in that ocean. And then I will understand and then I will observe and I will experience and I feel and I will notice what Krishna's party is doing and what is my role in that party and what is my work and duty in that party. So I wish we all could take that commitment and lead our lives like that till the end of our last breath. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Anybody has any comments or corrections?